Yes. Hey, folks. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, so thrilled to be here. So we're going to talk about our book. Uh, it's still explained. So let me go ahead uh, share my screen. Uh, if I can share screen successfully. Uh, to... Okay, can you guys uh, see my screen? I just run through a live demo uh, in my session previously. So that's why you're seeing some background there. Um, okay, so uh, let me quickly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Lin Sang. Um, I'm a senior technical staff member and also a master inventor with IBM. I've been working for IBM for a long time. Uh, IBM is a co-founder of the Istio Open Source Project. I've been working on the project for a little bit over three years now. This is actually my fourth year speak about Istio at uh, ATO. So great honor to be here. Um, so last year we uh, wrote a book with my co-author Dan Berg um, about Istio Explained. It's really to help our users to get started with uh, Service Mesh. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, O'Reilly, they do have a format called Report. I actually learned this myself. Um, so the report um, is reserved for books that's like uh, 75 pages or less. So this is a really short book. So who is this book really for? Uh, interestingly, you know, when we write the book, uh, we were mostly focusing, uh, you know, what do we want to write the book? And uh, sometimes we forgot, you know, who are these books really for? So let's make sure, you know, uh, we are level set on that. So we wrote this book really for the developers um, of microservices, the operators who are operating microservices um, in uh, in their corporate who are like the platform owners uh, who, you know, looking at their service mesh strategies, um, who are um, enforce policies for their uh, developers' uh, microservices. So these are the different roles we're looking at. Also like security offices who wants to make sure their platform is secure, uh, the service owners who owns the services. So these are the different uh, roles uh, we really wrote the book for. And this is a getting started book. So the book is really helping users to learn what is service mesh? Uh, what are the challenges in the microservice space to lead to the introduce of service mesh? Uh, it will talk about like the histories of service mesh. What is like the pre-service mesh with Netflix? Uh, what are the challenges with Kubernetes when you run service mesh in Kubernetes? You know what does Kubernetes didn't give to you that may not make you happy when you need to run microservices. And how service mesh works uh, with data plane, control plane, and also taking a look at the current uh, service mesh landscape. We will introduce you to different projects in service mesh. Uh, there are six, seven projects I think we talk about, uh, such as Envoy, such as um, App Mesh, uh, such as uh, Aspen Mesh, different companies in this landscape. We will talk about like SMI in this uh, landscape, uh, LinkD, which is one of the other service mesh projects out there. Um, and then we will dive into Istio. We will talk about the architecture of Istio and uh, how do you install Istio. We will have a step-by-step -step guide from installation to how do you actually onboard an application to Istio? How do you do it gradually so you don't have to feel 
overwhelmed. So you don't have to like learn a bunch of things up front. So you're focusing on one small thing at a time. How do you onboard in your services into Istio to be able to observe the services, to be able to secure the communications among your services and be able to control the traffics as you start to develop more than one version of your microservices. So I want to quickly introduce our applications uh, that we use in the book. So we use a trade application to do stock trades. Um, if you're an investor, you probably trade stock at one point. Um, so this is a really simple application. It essentially allows you to like buy stocks at the current price to look at uh, the portfolio, you know, how much money you have uh, to query the external stock um, service uh, that runs outside of our Kubernetes cluster to find out, hey, what is the today's price for uh, a given company, uh, a stock um, a company like Google, or Amazon, or IBM, so you get the most current price uh, when the market is open. Um, or when the market is closed, it's the price um, prior. Um, it also uses a day DB2 services because we're onboarding um, these services to the mesh gradually. So we would uh, be taking a look at uh, uh, the the services in the stock trader namespace, we will be onboarding, injecting sidecars to these services and be able to uh, talk about what are we learned along this journey of ourselves to leveraging Istio, to be able to using Istio to um, observe the connectivities of these microservices, to look at the trace headers, to um, analyze, uh, you know, how the timer spends, to secure the communications of the services. So we will talk about all these as we learning um, to bring our application onto Istio. The key takeaway of the book is uh, service mesh strategy is very important. If you have microservices, uh, you need to decide whether you need a uh, service mesh. Uh, you need to decide, um, you know, what are the service mesh compensation you have within your corporate and whether you should have service mesh. Um, a service mesh, what it is a service mesh? It fundamentally really allows you to observe, secure, and connect microservices. And I would add consistently to this as well. So that's a fundamental thing. You know, service mesh uh, framework provides you these capabilities. So you don't have to solve these capabilities yourself within your microservices. Istio is fundamentally a service mesh implementation. Istio is an open source project. It's a mature and multi-vendor open source implementations. So Istio is uh, pretty much ahead of uh, the competitors in this space. I think it's been uh, definitely one of the most popular open source uh, service mesh implementations out there. You can gradually adopt Istio one feature at a time. So uh, don't feel over well, uh, overwhelmed on uh, different features of Istio. As a user, you don't have to consume all the features at once. You really need to look at the business needs and uh, um, adopt Istio based on your needs. And I would say uh, after helping so many users adopt Istio, I would say probably secure communications is the easiest one to adopt Istio because that's the only one that you don't actually require any changes to your microservices. 
if you look at the other functions like observe, um, it does require you to propagate trace headers if you want to observe uh, distributed tracing with your microservices, uh, connect. It also requires you to make sure um, some of the, the trace head, uh, the, the header based routing, for instance, it does require you to have that plain traffic from your application container so that the Envoy proxy knows how to pass that traffic and use it to do intelligent decisions. Um, so it does require you sometimes, uh, most of the times, I would say, to make a little bit changes to your microservices. But um, start with secure, I would recommend, which is most of our users are doing um, to using Istio to help you secure microservices. And then along the way, you will be able to see observe as well. You will get a lot of observability, most likely for free without any changes. But some of the observability and connect to microservice does require a little bit of uh, changes of your code. Um, so the book, um, this is the QR code that you can also click on the book uh, link to get the book. Um, uh, as part of our cloud on IBM, we also offer managed Istio if you're interested to not uh, running Istio, upgrade Istio yourself if you're not interested in that. So having a vendor providing you uh, manage Istio for you would help you simplify uh, to keeping up uh, dated with the project. It's a lot of changes with the project for sure. Um, you can scan the QR from your phone and, you know, open the cam, uh, open the photo on the camera app. It would uh, show you the link to get registered uh, for a book. Basically, we ask you just like the name and um, and then the, then the email contact information that you'll be able to download our book and read this uh, really short book. Um, uh, it, it's, it's definitely going to help you if you are just get started learning service mesh. So I think that's all I have, uh, Yolanda. I would like to uh, see if there's any questions. Thank you, Lynn. I, I ask in the chat if you all have a question, and I don't see any at this time, but I would invite you, for those of you who are here, to open up your mic and ask Lynn any question you want to ask. We're at All Things Open 2020, and I know you have a lot to ask. Yeah, Yolanda, thank you so much for sending the book link on the chat as well. And, and if anyone is having any difficulty with that link, let me know. We'll be sure to help you out. So um, Lynn, while we're waiting for someone to ask us a question, um, you talked about your experience um, at IBM as a master inventor. It, can, can you talk a little bit more about uh, what inspired you to write the book? Um, you know, you, you mentioned that it's short, but any book that uh, expresses knowledge is a good thing. So I'm just curious, what was your motivation? Yeah, so I had a lot of struggle actually when writing the book. Um, so Istio is actually a really, really popular topic. It's interesting that um, before I was approached to write this book, um, I was actually approached to write Istio book like multiple times, right? Um, and the reason I actually decided to write this book is because it's target to be a really short book. You know, all of us have our day jobs, right? Which probably consume like 100% of your time uh, at work. So who has bandwidth to actually, <laughs> you know, write another thing, right? So when I signed up to write the book, I was like, wow, it's a short book, 75 pages. And I work on this project for three years, right? <laughs> How could that be hard, right? You know, for my three years expertise to build into a 75 pages book and I have a co-author, right? So right. I thought it wouldn't be that hard and they had a really tight schedule on us and certainly we didn't deliver on schedule as things always panned out. Um, because we want the book to be really, really good. Um, 
Right. Uh, O'Reilly, you guys, if you are familiar with O'Reilly, they, if you ever publish a book with O'Reilly, they actually have like really high bars um, for books uh, that, you know, they gone through like three or even 10 plus revisions <laughs> for wow. editing. And mm -hmm. so it's just like multiple editors. They also have like technical experts that they seek out like industry expert, like Christian Posta, uh, for example. Um, and Bursatter are our technical reviewers. And these two guys, they are the experts on service mesh. And they also wrote books about service mesh and Istio out there. So they are the industry experts. So they provide reviews for a book. So it mm -hmm. turned out to take a lot, a lot of time than mm -hmm. I had envisioned. So we ended up actually doing a lot of like uh, weekends projects for the book as well. Uh, cause, and also we find out uh, through writing the book is, you know, something you know fundamentally so well. It's like actually not so easy to explain and translate that <laughs> to the readers so people can actually get it easily and within the time they spend like two hours on reading the book so that turned out is not so easy well and it's the, interesting you raise it if you don't mind me jumping in because you do have a question here from uh, mauricio i believe uh and that was you talk about implementing security was easy he, he wondered is there a demo um that you could share uh in working with the technology um yeah so it's going to be a little bit harder for me to pull a demo right here um but if you guys are interested, I can certainly, you know, show you how to do that quickly. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen if I can find the window. So I'm still sharing my screen, right? Yes, we can still see your screen. Okay, awesome. So uh, one thing I want to... Uh, so istio.io is a wonderful resources out there. Um, so if you go to our documentations, one thing I really like is um, that you can actually find out tasks you can follow. So when I say secure microservices, it's like authentications, right? Um, so if, for instance, I can secure my microservices uh, through authentication policies, uh, well, we would allow um, we would allow the the communication of the mesh to go through, right? So mm -hmm. for instance, um, I can specify, like in my environment here, um, since you guys ask for live demo, so I want to give you a warning, you might be asked for failures <laughs> as well. <laughs> so this is my cluster um, and uh, I'm going to deep I'm going to deploy book info on this cluster um, so that I can show you guys a live demo. So we will do um, book info platform, platform cube, and book info. Did I miss anything? Mm, interesting. Oh, I was at the wrong directory. Sorry. So let me uh, say. So while this. Lynn is uh, getting ready to do her demo, again, I encourage you all to ask a question, um, especially as the demo is being done. If you would like for her to answer them, uh, we can get those to her. And um, yeah, so go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just following through my comments. So it's you, you have the floor. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you, Yolanda. So I want to, so you guys see, I just deploy book info application, right? So uh, because my namespace, which is the default namespace, have Istio injection enabled. Um, so I was able to deploy book info and along the side, it also deployed the sidecar proxy for each of the book info services, right? So in this example, you can see, you know, I have uh, two slash two, hopefully coming up soon. So let's do a status check on these. So you can see all of my book info uh, services are up running now, right? 
So in order for me to access book info, I'm going to access through Istio Gateways. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to apply uh, the gateway resources uh, for this. So what we are going to do is we're going to do a uh, deploy book info gateway, which I will show you what it looks like. Um, so as you can see, it's basically say, hey, I want to expose uh, port 80 um, HTTP protocol. And uh, when the user reaches out to the gateway on port 80, you know, if they click on slash product page or slash static or these different uh, prefix or exact, I want to route the traffic to product page on 9080, right? So I know I haven't talked about security yet. I'm just getting my application up running first. Um, so what we are going to do next is make sure, you know, I can access book info through the gateway. So what we're going to do is uh, go to here and the slash product page. By the way, the reason I'm showing here is because uh, this is my gateway. And uh, uh, I'm, uh, this is my external IP of my gateway. And uh, we are just clicking on the, uh, the gateway IP. So let me make sure this is the product page. OK, so it's actually not uh, reachable. So let's try to figure out what might be going wrong. Um, so I should have a book info gateway. Oh, I know why it's wrong. So this is uh, something interesting. So if you use uh, Istio Cattle Analyzer, uh, no validation issue. So notice I have another gateway here. So I want to check actually, take a quick look to check if it is um, generating any conflict. So notice I'm also deploy port 80 on this guy here too. So it's actually creating some conflict uh, with uh, port 80 on the book info gateway. So what I'm going to do is hopefully I can delete this gateway. Um, so it's called, H so I'm going to delete this HTTP gateway so that you would reduce uh, conflict. So hopefully this is up running now. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I have a uh, secure connections. Let me think that, um, uh, let me check my authentication policy here. Uh, Okay, um, I think I have some other gateway deployed. So let me uh, delete those two. Because the other gateway also restrict how, um, let me check how the service. Well, I told you guys this is asking for trouble with your environment and <laughs> not fully ready. Um, <laughs> well, actually I appreciate the fact that you were, um, <laughs> You were right on the spot of, of, of offering to do this. And I think that for the folks who are in the room now, uh, they might be learning a thing or two. So uh, thank you, um, Lynn, very much. And if there's anyone who joined uh, in the middle of what we're doing, uh, Lynn Sun has just talked about her book uh, that she's written. And uh, someone had asked for her to do a demo of the implementation of something <laughs> with Istio. So, um, that's what you're experiencing right now? Yeah, so I'm trying to, you know, clean up my, because this is a, I have a development cluster and this cluster is running like the latest um, master code base, right? So it's not a stable build as 1.7. And I also happen to deploy like a bunch of stuff on my cluster. For instance, I deploy Envoy filter on my cluster, which is alpha feature because I need it for some other purposes. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, I'm just cleaning these up, just making sure, you know, things are okay. Um, so one thing about Istio is you could actually looking at uh, how your things are deployed. Um, you can actually look at all the resources. So I'm hoping it will be up running now. 
oh, it did up running. I have to like, clean up my cluster. Okay. Um, so you never know what's been causing you issues. So now you can see my book info is running. Um, so we expose on the gateway, right? Um, so I can reach the book info. It's going to do like wrong robbing between three versions, um, by the way. So when you see no review with any star, um, mm -hmm. so that's version one. The, red star is version three the black is version two the black mm -hmm. star is version two so mm -hmm. so that's how you understand it's been run robbing among different versions right so one thing we uh, some of you ask is uh, okay you want to see authentication policy to apply mutual ts to the traffic right so what we are going to do is uh with, so if i were you as a new user i mean this is what you would look at and sometimes i look at them too because i can't remember all these commands either so you will be looking at okay i want to see you know do we have any authentic pure authentication policy uh, in my system so which i I have nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to globally enable Istio Mutual TOS in strict mode. This is pretty brave, I have to say. This essentially says for any traffic going through the mesh, I want to be strictly mutual TLS. By the way, the reason um, the project that have permissive enabled by default is, you know, we want to make sure your traffic can continue. Uh, flow with your applications. Um, but if your security pol uh, um, officer is going to tell you, you know, I want all the traffic to be securely mutual TIS, this is what you do. Uh, normally, I wouldn't recommend you to do this. I would recommend you to do this per namespace, right? Um, so you would say, hey, I want to default the, um, apply this maybe just to one of your namespace first before you do it globally. But since, um, you know, we're doing book info and uh, I'm just having my system mainly focus on this demo. I'm just going to apply for everything. Um, the reason you know it's globally is because you are deployed to the Istio system. So that's uh, the like the root uh, namespace. So it would apply to everything. So this essentially shows all the traffic of book info should be secure. If it's not secure, it's just not going to work. So what do you think might happen here? You know, Honestly, we might get an error. Actually, we so everything is secure, um, but um, but it's only within the traffic. So the other thing I want to highlight is uh, within the mesh. If you remember this, uh, um, I guess it's not in this talk. Um, it's in the talk I was just giving earlier um, that um, we uh, we we talk about. Uh, Istio uh, architecture. So the, the Istio architecture basically have, um, let me find out that talk quickly. Uh, Istio, I think it's this one, no? Okay, so um, Okay, so this diagram, I just wanna make sure you guys understand. So what I have just done is enable mutual TLS for all the services in the mesh. Um, so that's just uh, using this uh, command, which says, you know, if it's not uh, mutual TLS, I'm not gonna allow the traffic going through, it would fail. But what I haven't done is, you may be wondering, you know, this traffic is not secure end to end yet, that is correct, right? Because um, you have seen a not secure here, so I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, that's because, um, end to end, which would also involve to secure the traffic at the edge, which is the ingress gateway. So what we haven't done is secure the traffic at the edge, which you could also do that too um, by creating, update the gateway resources uh, to add uh, keys and thirds um, for that. Um, but you get the idea. So essentially, you know, it's basically the way Istio work is by policies. You specify policies uh, as, uh, Kubernetes YAML file, and then you apply it using your 
kubectl commands, and then Istio control plane is going to help you propagate that configuration to the sidecar proxy, and then the sidecar proxy is being programmed to do what you told them to do. Um, was that helpful? I think from the responses, it was very helpful. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, Mauricio wanted you to know that his best professors were the ones who were not afraid to be wrong or to not know the answer. And indeed, you took, I think, this audience through an example that worked and, uh, and they saw the process. So I thank you. That was pretty doggone cool uh, for you to do. Well, thanks I, so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was fun. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> So Lynn, can you talk about, do you have any future books um, that you are writing um, and that might uh, be on the horizon for folks to look out for? Oh, that's a great question. Not currently, gosh, yeah. I mean, writing a book, like I said, it's like tremendous effort. So I kind of scaled down a little bit more on blogs and conference speaking now, because that's something, you know, it's containable within a week or two <laughs> prep time. So I, I'm actually submitting, uh, like I've been very active in speaking. I've been speaking about service meshes still hard. Um, I've been speaking about, you know, is still how we transition from microservices to monolithic this year. So that's interesting. And the upcoming uh, KubeCon and service mesh con, I'm going to also speak about is still simplified beyond single cloud brave enough to take another book <laughs> for the short time being. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be speaking any more for All Things Open um, after this session? Any more today uh, or tomorrow? Uh, no, I would be hopefully done so I can go back to my day job, as you can <laughs> see. Yeah. We have Istio 1.8 coming up, I think, before Thanksgiving. So oh, yeah. we want to kind of tie that up to at least get ready for a user right before KubeCon. Well, again, for those of you who might have um, come in, uh, I see your note, Peter, about the link not opening. I will check on that and uh, make sure that it's working. Um, and get that to you. But I also want to see um, if there are any other questions that people might have for Lynn uh, while I go run and figure that out. Um, and then while I do that, Lynn, I'll ask you, is there any um, thing that you want to challenge this audience uh, to think about uh, in the future of working with Itzio and, um, and having access to you to ask questions? Yeah, uh, so just to, uh, before I get to there, I just want to make sure, you know, the book link, I literally just click on it. So basically you can click on it, you would get to this link. Um, does people having more troubles beyond the registration and download the book for free? Uh, so Peter, if you can chat and let us know what the issue is that you're having, that'll help me and yeah. then perhaps solve the problem that you had. And if there's anyone else who's used the IBM.biz link and it has not given you trouble, if you can let us know that, uh, that'll help uh, us kind of break down and figure out what's happening. I'm gonna go on the link as well. Okay. Okay, so uh, it's That's been loading for the last 10 minutes. So it's taking a while to load. Anyone else having any loading issues with the with the link. Don't worry, we're gonna figure it out before the end of this session. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. So Mauricio, it's working. Christian is working for him. Okay, yeah, for it's her. working for me too. I just use my personal email. As you guys, guys can see my, on my screen, it might be your browser, you know, kind of like yep. clear your cache here and maybe using a different browser. Well, actually, it looks like uh, Peter has it working uh, now, so it took Yay. him directly to the page. I know, yes. And if there's anyone else who's having a problem, let us know, um, because part of, again, you joining us today and listening to Lynn is that you get access to her book, and we want to make sure that you do get that. So, great. Yeah. Awesome. 
That that's great. I'm glad it works. So yeah, Yolanda, back to your question. You know, I would challenge you if you have microservices uh, in your organization, I would challenge you to definitely you know learn about service mesh, uh, just to understand you know what's out there. Why is this a hot thing out there? Like service mesh has been rated like. Uh, the year of uh, 2019 is like service mesh. You want to understand, you know, is this something relevant to you? Is this something you should be looking into? Is this something that could potentially help your organization to run more effectively and maybe even save a cost, right? Because I, I actually got user ask me, you know, hey, you know, the site proxy, are you worried about the performance impact and the resource constraints with the site proxy? The, that's one way to look at it. But the other way to look at it is, I mean, you're leveraging the best of open source project Envoy to do your site proxy. Do you actually think that actually is not comparable to developer writing their own ways to connect secure and manage their microservices and also writing their own ways for different languages? Mm -hmm. So think about that, you know, how much brain power you are leveraging using the most popular proxy such as Envoy to mediate your traffic. So I want to challenge you to learn more about uh, service mesh, you know, to have hands on to play with one of the service mesh projects. Uh, certainly if you follow my book, it will be Istio. It will be, you know, looking at understanding why so many people are talking about it. You know, how does this really help, potentially help you uh, and your organizations to standardize things, to help your services to communicate consistently, to apply policies like what I've shown, you know, you could be a lot easier with trust each developer to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a question that has come up and that is how long is that link going to be available? Is it complements of IBM forever or is there a certain period of time we're going to cut it off? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I think the link is going to be available for a long time, at least to my understanding. So it's definitely available throughout the conference. I would say probably throughout, uh, you know, the end of this year for sure. You know, I have no idea how long it would last. So definitely <laughs> go get it while it's still out there. Yeah, hit the download button. And so here's another question. If someone wants to get your autograph, how would they do that? Yeah, I wish it would be easy, you know, I wish there is like a physical place, you know, we can shake hand, you know, to be able to write something, you know, that's something we haven't figured out how to solve it uh, with COVID, you know, uh, maybe next year, definitely, if you have the book, I'd be happy to uh, probably go to the next KubeCon when we actually can physically meet. We're also discussing about IstioCon, so whenever the next conference about service mesh or you know, Kubernetes or Istio, I'll be most likely to be there and hopefully we'll be able to meet you one day. Nice. So ladies and gentlemen, you are at the All Things Open 2020 um, book signing session with uh, Lynn Sun and she's talking about Itzio Explained. We have about seven minutes or so left before uh, Lynn gets to go back to her life uh, at IBM. And uh, so I wanna just, again, offer to you the opportunity to ask any questions that you might have. Uh, based on all the wonderful uh, information she shared so far, especially the demo. And, um, and again, <laughs> thank you so far for those of you who have been giving us comments. We appreciate it very much. Um, and um, yeah, so, uh, and then I, what I want you to do um, is when you leave and you go to your next sessions, I want you to tell everyone about Lynn and your session and how wonderful this was for you. And um, <laughs> and uh, share the link because knowledge is power. And this is great information that she shared. So we're not, we're not quite gone yet, uh, for those of you who are still here. Uh, but uh, I do just want to just reiterate that we appreciate you all attending the conference today and that um, IBM is very proud of Lynn and the work that she's doing. And 
and we're offering her to you right in this moment to give us everything you'd like to know about Lynn. <laughs> and it's any chatting, any questions? All right, so uh, while we're in our last few minutes, Lynn, um, there is a question that has just come in. It is, um, I don't know if you can see it as well. I can read it aloud for those who might not be able to see it. Is there any performance concerns with proxying all the traffic to and from um, each microservice through a sidecar container? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I was actually just uh, stop sharing my screen, uh, but I'm going to go ahead share my screen one more time. Um, okay, so yeah, definitely there are performance concerns. I mean, it's a very legitimate questions, right? So the Istio team actually studied, uh, I want you to learn this uh, search button here. So I use it a lot. So um, so we actually publish uh, performance data for every single release. Like this performance data is right on 1.7, right? So we actually do uh, load testing. So we will tell you during the load, like we have a thousand services with 2000 sidecars mm -hmm. and there's like 70K mesh wide request per second. And when we run that with the latest Istio 1.7.3, we would tell you, you know, how much um, CPU and memory are used uh, per request per second and how much Envoy is adding to the 90% latency. So we would also tell you like the control plane performances. Uh, if you have a lot of um, services, we do recommend you use namespace isolations so that your configuration are not um, propagated across all the namespaces. I think I mentioned the Envoy configuration are non-trivial. It's like thousands and thousands of lines. So if you have a lot of services, you want to make sure you are scoping your uh, configuration precisely to the namespace that needs that configuration. Um, so, um, so we have all that data and we have the data on the latencies. Like in this example, we would show you, you know, how much are the latencies and we really measure in milliseconds here, right? So the latency normally is acceptable for most of the user unless you are really, you know, you can't tolerate like a few milliseconds of delay. But the, on the other hand, I would challenge you, right? If you're not spending that time in proxy to do this work that service mesh is providing for you, you have to do equivalent work in your application container too. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the latency and performance concern, you have to look at both folders. You can't just simply look at, okay, Istio or any service mesh proxy, you are introducing this much latency. That's not apple to apple comparison because we're actually reducing for your application to solve these problems because we solve it in a proxy for you, right? So you have to look at, okay, if I'm not using proxy, if I'm actually doing this in my application container, you know, what are the latency, what are the CPU and memory I would be getting to really comparing this, um, uh, the functionality. That's awesome. 